Hi, Shema Polot here. So, do you sometimes find yourself scrolling on the internet, on your phone or on your laptop and you find something, either it's a meme or an article that you really like and you want to save it to read it later? What do you do? Do you take a screenshot and save it to your phone? Do you send the link to yourself via email? What do you do? Do you have an app that you use? Well, if you have an app that you use, then you might want to skip this video. But otherwise, this video is going to show you all the different really cool ways you can save all the stuff that you find on the internet for later. That's articles, that's pictures, that's memes, links, all the cool stuff. Let's get into it. All right, so the really overarching name for all these tools is essentially bookmark managers. Um, even though there are a bunch of other names for them, uh, but today I'm going to share about five tools with you and so we are going to jump right into it. I'm going to share a couple and then I'm going to tell you the one that I use and why I use it and I'll keep sharing the different features that are available with the different applications and that allow you to maybe make the decision for yourself. All right, but first, first we're going to talk about a, an app called Pocket, right? So Pocket is an app that allows you again to save a bunch of articles that you find on the internet and save them to a place where you can highlight them and you can save all the different highlights that you have. So here we are on Pocket's website. And um, so these, so the thing about Pocket is really cool, but the free version, because I'm trying to get you free things, the free version is quite limited. For example, you can save a bunch of articles and you can read them later and you can watch and you can listen, but that's pretty much all you can do. You can not You can only highlight about three articles a month, I think, or three articles total, I can't remember exactly. Um, but you can only highlight a limited number of, of articles and you can't do any cool stuff like add tags and all that stuff, which allows you to organize all the articles very nicely within the interface. And so as cool as Pocket is, if you're someone that doesn't want to pay for something like this, then I wouldn't recommend it. However, if, it's, if you just want a, a place to save articles that you can read le later, it also has text to speech so it can read the articles to you and you can listen to them instead of reading them. Um, so if you just want to save stuff for reading later, then Pocket is fantastic. However, if you want to do stuff like highlight the articles and tag them, maybe productivity or self-improvement or data articles or journalism, whatever stuff you do, then uh, you would have to pay uh, for the paid version of Pocket to be able to access some of those features. Um, and as you can see here, some of the, the features uh, in the paid for membership allow you to have a permanent library that you save for every, of everything you save. A permanent library that means even even when um, the app closes down, right? Even when anything happens, you still have access to this library of information that you've saved over time. And then you can you can do tags uh, to tag the articles, and you can you can highlight articles that you, the different text in the articles that you read an unlimited number of times. And you can also change fonts and stuff like that. You can customize the entire interface and the experience if you want. Um, but yeah, so that's what that's what Pocket does. It's really cool. It has a smooth and cl smooth and clean interface. It's very cool. But yeah, just depends on what you want. That that'll help you determine whether or not you would like to use it. But that's Pocket, and that's the fast one. The next one that I would like to show you is called Raindrop. Now, Raindrop is cool. I was actually using it for a while, um, and it really so it just has a little more free features than Pocket, which is why I was using it. So as you can see here, um, it allows for unlimited bookmarks, unlimited collections, unlimited highlights, which is important to me because I like to highlight stuff and then just go reference them later. For example, sometimes I'm reading something and it just really sticks out to me or it sounds really cool. And so I try to highlight it so I can ruminate on it later on. Right. And so and it's, it, it has it has all these apps have both a desktop and a, a web version and an app that you can have on your phone, which synchronizes all those things across the different devices that you have, which is another really cool thing. Um, some of them, however, might ask you to pay to synchronize to additional devices. Uh, so that's also something to look into. Um, but yeah, but so Raindrop I used for a while and I can actually, and I can actually take you inside my Raindrop. And so Raindrop is really cool because one, the interface looks fantastic. Two, it is very easy to, um, all these apps also have extensions, right? So now like the, I have an extension for Raindrop, which allows me to, right? So if I go inside my extensions, 
Uh, I think I actually deleted it because I don't use RenderUp anymore. But yeah, but so um, it allow you, you all these apps have extensions which allow you to save articles in real time while you're reading or while you're browsing on the internet, either on your phone or on your laptop. And so as you can see, it organizes everything really well, and you can categorize things. I categorize things in as news newsletter stuff, life stuff, make money, courses, writing, and things like that. And so all your highlights can get housed in one location like this and all your articles will get housed in another location like this and you can add tags and all that stuff and it's fantastic and so this this was working for me just fine and uh, i honestly recommend raindrop if you want something that to save articles and images and things like that from the internet onto your platform onto your phone or wherever you want to keep them it has a desktop, it has a mobile app as well. So Ra Raindrop is really cool for that. However, the reason why I moved from Raindrop is because of the feature that allows you to have all your newsletters in one place. Because I read a lot of newsletters because I learn a lot of stuff. Also because it helps me improve my own newsletters, which there are links in the description below this video if you want to subscribe to them. Um, but yes, so, uh, so I have, I have, I have this. I now use this platform called Omnivore that allows me to sort of pull all the newsletters that I read into one location so I can read them from there and make highlights and do all that stuff and just in one place. And so it's just, I try to make, make, make my, I try to use as few applications as possible. I know even though I share about a ton of applications, I try to put as much of all the things I do into one place as possible. And so when I found Omnivore, which is open source, which I'm going to talk about next. Um, it allowed me to do that, and that's how I ended up moving away from Raindrop. But otherwise, Raindrop is really cool if that newsletter little feature isn't really important to you. Otherwise, Raindrop does the same things as Pocket, uh, just a little bit better, in my opinion. All right, but that's Raindrop. Okay, the next option I'm going to show you is Omnivore, which is what I use right now. Now, as you can see right now, this is the inbox version. It has all the newsletters that I read. And so with Omnivore 1, I can use the, the extension to save an article that I find on the internet. Um, and then while I'm, after I save that article, I can read it inside Omnivore. It has a very nice reader that makes everything look nice and clean. I'll give you an example. I'll open up Ali Abdal's newsletter. And so this is it. I always, I'm always in dark mode because this is what I like. But yes, yeah, so it makes everything nice and clean so you can read them very easy on the eyes. And then also you can, it allows you to highlight an unlimited number of times. So I can highlight text like this if I wanted to highlight that. Okay, and I can go back to the home screen. But yes, so I can add articles with a link. Um, this adding with a link here if you don't have, um, if you don't want to, if you say, for example, want to save a tweet or add something from a specific place and maybe you, you didn't access it via the internet, then you can just get its link and then add it to Omnivore. Um, it can it collects all my subscriptions as you see here, which is really 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 important to me That's what allows me to have this it also has my highlights so I can collect all my highlights in one place as you can see here uh, Which is really cool and I have lab it has labels so it allows me to label different articles as in the different sections of my life that are interesting to me and pertinent to me so AI stuff newsletter stuff um, I should probably add one on YouTube stuff as well uh, but yes, but now the best part about Omnivore, it's not perfect. Um, there are a few features it lacks. For example, um, it doesn't allow you to add a tag while you're on, on the internet directly. You have to sort of save the article first, then add the tag, say add productivity to tag that specific article or something related to productivity. But that's a small thing that I think they will fix in the near future. Um, but it's also a function of the fact that Omnivore is, op om is open source and completely free right for me which was honestly that's why i'm here um, because it's free and it does probably 95 percent of the things that raindrop and pocket do already so for me i was just like you know what i'm going to use this one and uh i'm honestly i can't complain it's doing exactly what it needs to do and i'm enjoying it and i like the interface i think it looks cool the mobile app looks exactly like this pretty much and it just it gets the job done and i love it so omnivore Again, a good place, a good way to save articles and things that you find on the internet in one place for you to read them, but also for you to co consolidate all the different newsletters that you're subscribed to. If you're subscribed to, like, say, a New York Times or a Morning Brew or a uh, Friday Fix or TLDR Weekly, you can, ha you can house all those in one place using something like Omnivore. All right. 
So check that one out. The next option I do want to talk about is an application called Readwise. Now Readwise is really cool. Um, it's really, really cool. The only issue I have is that, again, its free version is pretty much useless, honestly. Um, actually, I don't even think that, I think you have to, you can try it for free uh, for 30 days and then you have to go on one, onto one of the paid options, which is really the problem. And I think it's $8 a month um, to use the, uh, the paid for version. But if you can afford the paid for version, then Readwise is next level, especially if you're a reader, someone who reads books and articles, and maybe you're a journalist or someone who just read, consumes a lot of literature on the internet and articles, then Readwise is the jam because you can, it, it, it can synchronize all the different platforms that you use to access your books, say eBooks, Apple Books, um, a bunch of different Kindle books from your Kindle and all that stuff. So it can synchronize all that information in one place such that if you highlight articles in a book that you read on your Kindle or if you highlight articles in a book that you read on your app in your Apple Books, all those highlights and all the notes related to that specific book can appear in one central location in Readwise. And Readwise uses AI to summarize articles. It uses AI to do speech to text and it can read articles to you. And Readwise also has a complementary feature called Reader, uh, which I'm just going to click on here really quickly. So and then so Reader is pretty much similar to what Omnivore does that I showed you. Reader is a way for you to co to sort of consolidate all the different things that you read into one place. It does that with newsletters as well that I just talked about in Omnivore. Um, it just it does honestly. It looks cooler than Omnivore, and also it has speech to text which Omnivore doesn't have, and it also has a bunch of AI integrations that allow it to read stuff to you, to summarize articles for you. Um, so it's a lot more beefed up. So maybe that's the reason why it's not free. Um, but yeah, eight dollars a month. It's, that's something you're willing to do. It's and you can, in the same way, you can save tweets, Twitter threads, you can save almost anything uh, in Readwise and Reader. And it's really fantastic. It just isn't free, $8 a month. But if something you can afford, then honestly, I would highly recommend it over uh, Omnivore. Um, but yeah, otherwise, Reader is another good option. Now, another option that I want to talk about is Notion. Now, Notion is this super app that I mentioned a bunch of times, that, and I haven't yet made a video on it because... Still trying to figure out what that would look like because um, uh, Notion is a beast and uh, it would be hard to make a focused video on some new specific use case for Notion. Um, but there are tons of people on the internet, on YouTube, that have made a lot of videos on Notion. And if you need help with getting started with Notion, I'm happy to make recommendations. But Thomas Frank is a really good option for you to start um, off the top of my head. But Notion has a web clipper. And Notion is also really cool because one of the features it has is that it has a feature that can allow you to save literally anything on the internet on Notion. Pictures, memes, videos, tweets, anything. Um, it does it better than any of these other platforms, interestingly, even though it's not primarily a bookmark manager. But that feature, its web clipper, allows you to get things from anywhere on the internet and put and keep them in notion better than any of these other platforms in my opinion um so if 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 you're if you're interested in just that feature the notion might be worth you checking out it is fantastic in that regard but otherwise it's a super it's a it's, it's a super app that can that, that can be great with for project management if you work with teams and if you have a company and it's it's a good place for you to have a sort of dashboard with employee manuals and all these different documentations that people in your workplace need to um, to reference and things like that. If you want to do Notion for Teams, then it's not free, uh, but worth it if it's something that you use, uh, just because it's a great way to organize all the information in your organization in one place. And again, all, Notion is a super app, so it can do everything that, it can store information the way Google Drive stores information. It can do project management the way Trello or Asana or any of those other platforms use. You can write notes in it, you can journal, you can do trackers. It's there's almost nothing you can't do in Notion. It's just a question of whether or not you can build it. And so it's definitely a tool to check into if you are, um, if those use cases I've mentioned sound interesting to you. All right, but the last option that I do want to talk about is a tool which is primarily a note-taking tool called Evernote. And Evernote is fantastic because it has one of the best uh, search algorithms I've ever seen, uh, honestly, in my opinion. Uh, it, similar to, to Notion's Web Clipper, Evernote also has a Web Clipper that allows you to save anything. 
uh, on the internet into into Evernote. Uh, it has it has a complementary mobile app as well. So anything you find a tweet, a meme, a video, a random like any sort of file that you find on the internet you can save onto Evernote. And the really cool thing is that you don't technically you don't even have to organize it. Even though I like to compulsively organize myself, but you don't even have to organize the stuff that you save. All you have to do is search in, in Evernote for something related to that video and Evernote will find it wherever it is. So you can save anything and you can have this katogo or this mess inside your Evernote and then just type uh, a word that corresponds to that video or that file and Evernote will pull it up. So it's fantastic. It is fantastic. Otherwise, it's primarily a note-taking app. And so if, you, if it's something you want to use for notes, then it's really cool. And it also allows you to highlight notes and organize them really well and do things like that. Um, but I think I use the most important feature I use would be the Clipper. And I used to use it a while back before I decided to sort of tone down on all the apps I was using just because I was just getting too distracted by all that. Um, but yes, so if you want to save your information all in one place, if you want to save all the things you find all over the internet, then one of these uh, what, four or five tools will be absolutely essential for your life and you should look into them. I will leave links to all these applications in the description below. Otherwise, I thank you for watching this video and before you leave, you can watch a bunch of other videos that I make right here and I will see you in the next one. Peace.